All right. So now uh, it tells everybody we're recording now. So you don't have to do anything. Well, perfect. Well, and I know I know Ross is on the East Coast, and so he is. Mm-hmm. He okay. it is uh, <laughs> nine wore, nine twenty for him. He wore an orange <laughs> shirt for you tonight too, because he turns into a pumpkin here at midnight. So. Oh, does he? <laughs> Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Levi. It'll make sense on my screen. Anyway, it just, the pointing works for like 12 people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Uh, we are still socially distanced because it's the only way we can do a show. And I've barely, I, this will be 97 weeks in a row I've made that same statement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, I'm still in Kansas City. Ross is still in Connecticut. And Levi's in Kansas. But we're like five and a half hours apart. We 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 are. We're probably five and a half hours apart. Um, I was actually closer to you today. Um, I was in Manhattan, Kansas today. Oh yeah, that's like it's like less than it's like yeah. an hour and forty five minutes now with new speeds on the interstates. <laughs> we should talk more and probably plan this out next time meet in yeah, person. <laughs> definitely, yeah, that would have definitely been easier to do for a show, but. Yeah, so uh, Levi's back too. This is this is a return episode. We don't always. I, I sometimes forget to tell people if you've come back. So you are, you you're still like three episodes away from like getting running for like most frequent guests. So okay, okay. They're, they're, well, well, soon people are gonna, just going to consider me as a host after exactly. after too long. <laughs> exactly we, where we're headed. So yeah. uh, next up, the news. Uh, I didn't see this first one, Ross. So you gotta, you gotta tell me about it. I yeah, there, I there's mean, not I much to, <laughs> not much to report here. The same thing that everybody expected is true. The Rivian is fast. So the uh, the electric pickup was fast. The electric pickup is that everybody thought was going to be fast is in fact fast. Oh. Motor Trend clocked it on the street tires at three one to sixty and three point two on the all terrains to sixty. So you lose a tenth of the all ter- like, that's, that's that's fast. That's fucking fast. Like that's no joke. Nine eleven turbo territory. I think the first like all wheel drive fast thing I ever drove was like an Audi uh, S four with the V eight. Yeah. So like we're going way back, like twenty seven. Yeah, I think I think it was an 08. Yeah. Um, and that was like four point eight, I think zero to sixty. And even then, I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. <laughs> like I couldn't buy it. Mm-hmm. But I got to test drive it, and I had so much fun test driving it. But like an entire yeah. second faster? That's almost two, dude. <laughs> That's This is drastically faster than anything of that size or purpose needs to be. But yeah, I don't know. There's and, nothing groundbreaking about it. It's just pretty I know we've to talked a lot about like electric stuff lately because we had Johnny on who did his whole like yep. trans-American trail trip with it. And he, he only had a section, but like, he, I've heard him tell the story. I heard him tell it on our show and I heard him tell it on Smoking Tire, like the anecdote. And mm-hmm. I think I heard him tell it on Spikes. Maybe I'm listening to too many podcasts. I think uh, the, all three of our podcasts are becoming the same. <laughs> We're having the same people on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I need to stop. <laughs> Mr. Seinfeld, you can, uh, you're always welcome. You know what's crazy is so the Rivian's competitor here just looked it up um of the ford lightning and and i'm sure because there's not a lot of lightnings out there same with the rivians but they're saying the lightning has a 4.5 second see and that's uh zero to 60 that's still really fast in the terms of internet it's so slow but that's so fast you know one thing i will say is it said it should hit zero to 60 around 4.5 seconds so it could be faster the the Mach E I've got to have quite a bit of experience with Ford's new Mustang kind of thing. Yeah, and it's a it's a three point eight second zero to sixty in the GT. Yeah, that's in the Mustang the Mach E GT. Yeah, that's that's yeah. So so three point one in a full size pickup that probably weighs seven thousand pounds. It's 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 out there like it's so like yes. <laughs> the amount of people that are gonna smash in this stuff like there was seven there was two hundred. Like, 7200 pounds so yeah that's that's a lot that, that was a guess out of mine because those batteries <laughs> are freaking heavy man right and there was there was an i remember there was a, an account of a rivian like driving over something in a parking lot because 
somebody mashed an accelerator in a parking lot and it went up and over something yeah. like yep if they're fast so yep. yeah yep. so that's it on that front uh we're there's plenty of SEMA news for us to dabble in here you want to talk I, about the broncos i do because i know somebody else has a lot of experience with them on the show today <laughs> Uh, and I just, this, somehow I missed that this was at SEMA. Like I didn't see a picture of this and I think the it's awesome. BDS uh, shortened cab Bronco. Yeah. So it's a two, two door Bronco. They closed the cabin behind the driver and front passenger, put a little bed behind it. And I think it looks amazing. And also this row lights above the, I'm fairly certain this is the rendering too. <laughs> that is definitely a computer generated yeah. image. <laughs> But yeah, no, it, it's uh, vaguely reminiscent of those Jeep, what was it, JK8, where they just put a tiny little bed on the back. There's and- there's a company that makes these roofs for Jeeps. Um, is it Great Top? Uh, best Top. Um, best Top? Best right. Top? Yep, Best Top. Best Top. Major, top. major company. Right. And so, but they'll do these for Jeeps. So like mm-hmm. seeing it on a Bronco, I was like, Yes. But that wasn't the most batshit crazy Bronco that was there. And again, did it not make it there? I forgot a render well, image. One thing I will mention on that that BDS deal, I think it's kind of reminiscing more like towards the U13s. Uh, okay. Bronco made in the in the 60s called the U13, which is essentially that, but 1966. So I think that's kind of more or less what they were going for there. Um, and if you can find like a U13 Bronco in the 60s, it's probably worth like, Two hundred thousand dollars now, <laughs> dude. They're awesome. Crazy. <laughs> I have to pull I a found picture a, of that. No, no, I got you. I got you. you oh, that's literally oh, yeah. my job on the show. Like that's, I produce. Fair I enough. Do things. Fair enough. <laughs> that's a U thirteen. Okay. Yeah, but you can show. I mean, they they have different U thirteens that are actually pick up like. Yeah, close close. So this is the U thirteen Roadster. Can we call it Notchback? <laughs> Keep no, you cannot family. call it not. <laughs> well, a- and please, uh, I, it half cab. You can call it a half cab because half cab. I'm learning about it. Maybe it's called the <laughs> U14. Uh, maybe it's called the U14, actually. Um, I, I'm just kind of starting to get into the, the classic Bronco ones. Um, oh, my gosh. So, yeah, try U14. I know what U14. you're gorgeous. I know what you're talking about. And, they, yeah, if that's what they were trying to emulate, then they hit the They nail nailed it. Yeah. Because this is great. So Le- Levi, yeah, you already hundred yeah. percent. You yeah. already own the classic like off roader that I would want. I want a commando. Like that's <laughs> this yeah, is next. <laughs> yeah, dude. I so I just found one of these down in Oklahoma that I'm really, really trying to get bought. I'm just hoping the guy doesn't get too smart on me and actually figures out what it's worth. Oh boy, so, oh, it's one of those deals that's sitting in a pasture, and the guy's like. <laughs> I ain't ever going to do anything with it. And it like oh. has like bass boat seats in it and stuff. And it's mm-hmm. like perfect. And uh, so I'm trying to get this thing bought. I just. Like how fast are you to get there with a trailer? Yeah. Right. Oh, <laughs> why yeah. are you on this? Well, why they, are you recording right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, thing is it, a trailer. It already has one of those camper towing bars on it. You nice. Know, on the, on the, oh yeah. yeah. Flat so toes. trailer. Flat Four toes, tires yeah, are there. So. <laughs> yep, <laughs> exactly. Going? exactly that's so cool. that's pretty cool that's so great so you so, see that's already better there was one with tracks i don't i didn't see pictures of it there did anybody see actual can't, photos can't of this thing I saw photos no so this is, uh it was it it was in ford's booth correct i think so but all i could find like when i searched for sema bronco tucci hot rods it was this it was the rendering yeah i believe that's actually in ford's booth or was in ford's booth that rendering looks like it was in Forza. <laughs> yeah. It's, it. I like the idea of tracked things until I saw that episode of the Grand Tour where they put tracks on a Focus RS and everything kind of fell apart because it overheated and it wasn't meant for that because they're meant for snow, not sandy, hot roads. But oh, yeah. Who would have thought? It'd be I'm, fun in the mountains. Yeah. It'd be fun in the mountains. I mean, if Ken Block has a raptor with these on it right like yeah honestly if you didn't <laughs> tell me that this wasn't a, a ken block project i would have guessed it was a ken block project 
Yeah, exactly. I kind of have the same vibes from the highlighter yellow to yeah. the stripes yep. and the kind of the goofy, but he's a, he's a, he's a German guy now. Exactly. Howdy, Howdy man. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't even cover that on the show. We just kind of let that exist in the world. And the world everybody knows. That. We don't have to talk about it. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, the Chevy beast. Chevy we didn't beast. talk about Chevy beast either. Uh, Chevy yeah. wants a part of the side-by-side game. Or is that what this is? Appeal to yeah. like rock bouncers yeah. and buggies, something like that. It's a it's Silverado. Goofy. Yeah. It, so it's the VIN, the, big. The VIN, VIN has a Silverado VIN. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they, 62 V8. Uh, now I forgot my notes and I can't switch to them because it's on the same screen. <laughs> I got you. Sorry. 62 V8, 641 horsepower, 650 pound feet of torque, 37 inch tires. And they're pushed wider. I know that. Yeah. And, and no doors and the roof looks like the roof you get on a side-by-side. So it's got trophy truck tires in the back. You know, that kind of ordeal. Is it a sand rail from the factory? Other than like the engines in the front? Like, I, I don't really know what they were going for here. And I think there's been some conversations about like whether it was sand rail, you know, or like Baja truck or I don't know what, what happens when, you know, side-by-sides aren't good enough for you. Um, I mean, it, it, it is a concept. It it's not, it's, a, it's not they'll real. never build it. Yeah. Also, you know, the one thing I will say, the biggest problem with side-by-sides is the fact that they're not street legal. So maybe they're looking at this going like, okay, it's kind of a side-by-side mm-hmm. that you can still drive to the grocery store. Maybe, you know, um, yeah. it's been through the crash testing. We're able to produce this to where players and can am and all those other guys won't touch because they're not street legal. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, they're street legal in some states, just not national. Not, not in our yeah, state. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, interesting. Not, yeah, not in Kansas. But it begs the same question that we've been asking for a few years now. Why isn't Chevy building a blazer? Well, they are. Just, that could okay. <sighs> Guys, can we can we talk about this for just a second? Just like how bad what what you look at what could have been because because I come from a GM family, what could have been versus what is on the Blazer, and the thing is the Blazer from everybody I know that's driven it the Blazer is actually like half decent, but uh-huh. as a it is car as a as a as a small <laughs> as a crossover crossover-y yeah. thing, um, but. <sighs> It was close eyes, stick hand into grab bag of names with like serious brand cachet and pick one out. And that's what they're going with. What was the last year of a full size blazer? I'm going to guess. Well, okay. So K5 blazer or blazer when it was the, before it became the Tahoe, the two door Tahoe or the Yukon GT. Where, where you so well, I'm trying to stay away from the S10 blazer. Okay, no, no, no. Is what keeps creeping You're looking in. for a full size. Yeah. I want to so. say 93, 94, maybe. And then it became the and then it Blazer became, based on yeah, the, the Tahoe, Tahoe yeah. which then just became the Tahoe or the Yukon GT. That so this, is the it Tahoe seems like a Tahoe. based one. Yeah, that's the yeah. Tahoe based one. Is it? Yes. It, it is. seems short to me. Eh, no that's that's definitely so that's 90 anyway it three this this is the last time that we saw full size blazer even if based on a tahoe right like mm-hmm. they went from that to just not good to because we haven't had anything decent in between like but when you say blazer like as far as 2020 goes what i picture is a silver auto front end and maybe a little bit of a tahoe rear end kind of look going on two doors lift so kind of similar to like maybe the at4 uh tahoes that they have going on now great like that is what i had pictured <laughs> not this. Uh, not this yeah not this i agree yeah. if they took the current tahoe and just chop the middle section out of it kind of the same way the old one, the one that chris just had on the screen was done that'd be great at4 you know 
block and rear and maybe like 33s call it at that i i i feel like i don't think it would really compete with the bronco and the true off-road side of things but it might be a kind of a nice crossover between the two right uh, it'd be better on the road and god knows there's so many gm fanboys out there that would buy because it came from gm and because it's not you know ford the, or fca of course it's my guy it's the guy i love to follow on instagram for his renderings he did it for me already he, he did what yeah, we're talking that about looks like, awesome <laughs> doesn't it though it's so good it's more of a unibody standard cab short bed yeah with like 30 35s that looks great yeah z71 mm-hmm. packaged it up like it's great what yeah. could have been all about that what could have been anyways could, but it's could not. still maybe oh, it's not coming it's, it's not. <laughs> if if we get one there might be potential for when gm finally unleashes that electrified skateboard that they're basically going to put under everything <laughs> When they went through that that thing and they had all of the different silhouettes going above it, one was a van. We all saw the van. We we're like, yes, mm-hmm. maybe, because all you gotta do is just slap a body on top of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they have the Hummer. I, I, <laughs> we're not gonna get. Let's it. start. Let's start with the Hummer and see what happens from there. That's true. So they spent a lot of time and money on that. Yes. I yeah. Uh, I hope a lot of resources. I hope it's not bad. Anyways, anyways, so, I think it'll be cool. So last week we talked about uh, Polaris literally debuted their next 2022 model line for us and let mm-hmm. us freak out on prices and horsepower and everything. And then Ross couldn't sleep. So <laughs> this, and it's, and we were like, all of these prices are huge for these side-by-sides. And then Ross did a great job of breaking it down for us and making them seem reasonable. I don't know if it necessarily makes it seem reasonable per se but yeah. it puts it in perspective it makes it seem so cheap I, to I, me <laughs> i was thinking about what you get for your money in the razor world if you want four seats and you know the biggest engine and then what you get in the jeep world if you want four seats and the biggest engine so i'm just going to go through this real quick for like an, <laughs> i don't know if it's apples to apples or like apples to crab it's like apples apple or to an apple on steroids but sure yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so razor pro four Ra- razor pro r4 is 225 horsepower out of a four cylinder. The 392 Wrangler is 470 horsepower out of an eight cylinder. Hold on. You did not tell anybody you were comparing a Razor to the 392 Wrangler. What do you mean? You didn't say the words 392 Wrangler. You just said oh, Jeep. <laughs> so you Okay. <laughs> Let me uh, reopen this then. So we're, we're comparing what is the most razor that you'll be able to get in 22 to the most jeep you'll be able to get in 22 so and yeah chris has the picture on and it you know it it looks ridiculous and should be unbelievable to drive also those wheels are terrible so razor pro r4 is 225 horsepower the 392 jeep is 470 obviously twice the number of cylinders in jeep the razor weighs almost exactly 2,500 pounds and the Jeep weighs almost exactly 5,000 pounds. <laughs> That's kind of where the similarities start to separate a little bit, but those two things alone, I thought it was just interesting that they're almost exactly proportional there. Uh, the Razor has 32 inch tires with 33s available. The Jeep comes on 33s, 35s are available. The Razor has Fox suspension. The Jeep has Fox suspension. And then the Razor is $37,000 for the four-seater with, you know, the Fox Live valve and this new Dynamics kit that they got. And the 392 Wrangler starts at $74,000, which is exactly double. So I think it opens the door for, good job, Chris. That look, that's great. Anybody who's watching the video is like, uh, it's like um, 12 people who watch the video we have so much so, better number for that's audio ace production right there <laughs> but it opens the door for a lot of questions about like what you get for your money in the off-road world because i would wager that the razor is probably just as capable if not more capable on 95 to 99 percent of what will be done with either of these vehicles and half the price can't drive it on the street, but, but 
you know, you can put it on the trailer at the end of the day if you break it, drive it and tow it home. So I don't think anybody's going to tow a 392 to the trail unless if it's like a, you know, a build. Once you get to the dirt, though, like if we, as soon as we get to Utah, like we we just use a razor the whole time. Like they uh, you can't put it on the interstate, but like you can put it just about anywhere else. Like, yep. Yeah, it's true. Um, I think it would be interesting to have them on the same trail just to see, you know, what's more fun and what's more capable at the limit on dirt or climbs or crawling. But I'll, yeah, I'll let you reach out to Jeep on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Coming, coming from a guy that has a ton of razor experience, I can tell you right now that that, uh, man, that razor is going to be an absolute animal and right? by far, by far way more fun to drive than that Jeep. <laughs> uh, I will as far as, agree. S- s- as far as speed goes, um, comfort riding in the mountains. I mean, the only thing that Jeep has going for it, you get a, it starts raining on then those afternoon showers, you just roll up the windows and turn yeah. your windshield wiper on when you're hey, in a man. razor, you're sitting there like, oh. honestly. So <laughs> unfortunately I, I was up in New Hampshire in October and I borrowed a razor from Polaris and it rained the entire time. And it was so bad. <laughs> My dad's razor, uh, Actually, I'll know Sunday when I tear it apart what's wrong with it. But we took the windshield off of his and put it on this press razor. And But most of the people who live up there and do this every weekend have full windshield, full doors, roof, and you know a screen on the back. So it's like basically a full enclosure. Some of them have heat, AC. So, yeah. you know, by the time so you do all better. that, it's the same thing as driving the Jeep, except you can go a lot faster and, and not care about the consequences in the same way well and and arguably you know i'm I'm a huge side-by-side advocate as well but uh i also understand kind of what the problem is with the side-by-sides and i hope i'm not diving too deep into this but i feel like it's kind of a good conversation especially kind of for the off-roading side of things is the razors are, are amazing platforms they're fast like so fast and so capable and you can get a lot of like we talked you get a lot of uh, performance for your money um, arguably more than the jeep mm-hmm. but uh, at the same time any yahoo can go finance one for the bank or go buy one and suddenly be in this trophy truck style car and they just they go they go too fast too loud to whatever on the trails and they tear them up unfortunately mm-hmm. so 100 there's there's going to be a little bit of a um change happening unfortunately i i think as much as i hate it because i'm a razor advocate i'm a super like love my razors but i'm just so scared with future holds as far as on these public trails with these things because people get in them rent them buy yep. them finance yep. them and they they're superman and so yeah in probably 20 20- 12 or 2013 the state of massachusetts the limits for an off-road machine used to be uh 50 inches wide which you know there as long as you get through a gate you were fine and a thousand pounds dry no driver and all that so you know the base razor 800 at the time and even the razor s were still within the limits and then something happened and the state of massachusetts banned side-by-sides outright they said Mm. they're doing too much damage to the trails they basically blame the users and drivers of these and you know and just put a halt to the side-by-sides in the state of massachusetts on on the public trails altogether um you know didn't regulate dirt bikes or atvs at all and and it really opened some questions because at the time the big two up polaris is you know the I don't know if there was a thousand at the time, but the 850, they were touching almost a thousand pounds wet too. So, you know, it, it does open the door for a lot of conversations about like responsibility in the sport and taking care of the trail systems and, and, you know, the privileges that we have. Um, but you know, there's idiots everywhere. (laughs) So. absolutely there's there's idiots in jeeps too there's idiots in <laughs> will, will be broncos there's idiots everywhere exactly. that are, mm-hmm. go way too fast and mm-hmm. give everybody else a bad name so um yeah i, I i'm with you i i'm just very awfully worried about the future of everything um mm-hmm. so yeah I we're just, just here in the midwest we're just so 
cautious over like land use in Colorado and stuff because it seems like every second people try to land grab and try to take our privileges away from us, you know? Yeah. And so mm-hmm. we're we're very cautious of everything. Yeah. Well and I just I just hope they keep the Pro R and the Turbo R out of the rental company fleets. I, the last thing we want is just people going up, you know, leaf peeping on the weekends, driving these things. Yeah. And they go real fast when you put your foot down. Yeah, they just need a Ranger at that point. Like, <laughs> yeah, seriously. The, the XP1000s go fast. Like, they're all amazing <laughs> machines. Like, yeah, yeah. people complain, but I'm like, dude, like, I, I hop in my Razor and it's an awesome deal. I hop in my race car, which arguably costs triple what that dang razor does and that razor can like really hang in certain spots and just like you guys don't understand how frustrating it is for me to go (laughs) you're getting so much bang for your buck it's Uh an amazing machine and what you're asking this thing to do is really impressive yep yeah Yeah. people who haven't had seat time and i mean i've never obviously been in one of the off-road race vehicles but even just like a base racer these days or side by side of any kind is just (laughs) You know, why well, I, I still need to drive one. Yeah, you do. Get your ass out of east and we'll, <laughs> we'll put you in one. No offense, Levi's closer. So <laughs> come on, come on, Not let's wrong. let's go. Uh, yeah, especially with the uh, was it every dry riverbed counts as a public byway out west? And we have a lot of dry riverbeds. So, <laughs> but the main one's the Arkansas River. So. Right. And I already, I already had a Land Cruiser stuck in it once because it rained like seven <laughs> inches the night before we got there. So I think we talked about this last time. Yeah, yeah we definitely. I think so too. <laughs> it's uh, it. Uh, it's like it's one of those things that bugs me because I I take pride in not getting stuck, but yet still not avoiding the line kind of thing, which you shouldn't be prideful right. about that stuck. stuff. But yeah, Sucks you yeah we have the AT man. pictures of you, but. I just got everybody gets stuck. I, I shouldn't have been stuck though. That was my fault. So follow too closely to a guy. My dumb fault. Anyway, Ross, do you want to talk about your Tahoe? What you got? Yeah, we'll talk about it real quick. So uh, Chevy loaned me the Tahoe four wheel drive RST for the week. Wait, it's got four wheel drive. It is four wheel drive. Yes. And it also has the 6.2. So the base Tahoe RST has the five, three, and then this has the performance package or whatever it's called. So it's got Magna ride. Uh, the 6.2. And it's it's an interesting truck. Um, the 6.2 is great. There's no question about that. The transmission's great. New infotainment's great. It's enormous. It, it's <laughs> 211 inches long. And it's not, you know, it, it's that's that's the exact same vehicle that's sitting out front of my house right now, though I did not take that picture. No, I it's borrowed that one from the internet. I could ever take. Um, it, it's an interesting vehicle. So this one, so they started like 61 or 62 this one is 72 or 73 and it doesn't have a sunroof it doesn't have cooled seats you know and most concerningly it's 5600 pounds with the 62 and i haven't been able to find anything about upgraded brakes <laughs> so, so they made it a little quicker yeah a little less slow and it's a lot of momentum to try to stop on the stock brakes and yeah, it's, it's a contrived vehicle. When you opinion. were um, talking about its length, mm-hmm. it, I, I saw a Yukon the other night backed into a parking spot. And even, even though I could see the badge said Yukon, I was like, is that an XL? Yeah. Like yeah, the something about the, the, is... the Tahoes and the Yukons are a little longer than they used to be. Like they're a bit, well, yeah, no, I was talking to my dad about this because we had a bunch of um, GMT 700 and 800s growing up. And this is like, I think it's 10 or 12 inches longer than the newest one that we had, which was you know 15 years ago. But I think that the blacked out D pillar and then the really, really deep angle on that back window make it look really long. And then it's got a long overhang. It's, it's not bad. Um, it, you know, drives nice. It, has great power it's comfortable seats are amazing it's got as much room as you could possibly need in something of this size or class but i just don't see the point in trying to make a sporty vehicle out of something that's not sporty and the way i described it to sam earlier earlier this week was it's for the person who wants 
the Corvette or Camaro with the appearance package, you like can't climb into and out of one. <laughs> so, so uh, GMT eight hundred yeah. length is one ninety nine, right? So it's and this a is two foot longer. longer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like five hundred pounds. So I'm gonna hook a trailer up to it on Sunday. See how it does, you know, with the car trailer and yeah, possibly the can am parked on it. And yeah, I don't know. It's it's you know, it's definitely a good looking thing. It's just it doesn't need to be sporty. <laughs> Sport sporty SUV, like the full size sporty SUVs are just kind of silly. Yeah. Like the typhoons, the cyclones, those those are pretty great because they were S10 base, they were small, they were reasonable, like they were fast. Like well, even the Trailblazer SS, you remember that? Yeah, Hell, exactly. Yeah. That thing's great. <laughs> six liter, you get it in six liter and rear wheel drive too. Yes. Yeah. Which every well, now and then, drive. yeah. When well, I see a Trailblazer, I'm always like, wait, is that the, is that the, uh, oh no, it's not. It's just some crappy Trailblazer. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> and then they did the Equinox SS, which had nothing performance whatsoever about it except like the same rectangular exhaust outlets. Yeah. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> it was real bad. Cobalt no, SS could hustle. There was Cobalt, yeah, but there was also a, uh, a, v, a Saturn View red line that you could get with a stick. Like I said, grew up in a GM house. I knew all these yeah. weird things. That uh, did. How do you spell that? No, I know how to spell that. <laughs> I, I thought you were asking how to spell Equinox. I was like, oh, good luck. Dude, uh, crush that one. I taught middle yeah. school science for a decade. I can't nail that one. <laughs> <laughs> you probably but but Saturn? <laughs> yeah, Saturn. <laughs> Saturn. It's more for the joke. Plastic. Yeah, so uh, I still know. remember which side of the moon is waxing and waning. So it's just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Same. Super um, easy. Yeah, Wax so. ons on the right. It's super easy. So we'll have more on the Tahoe next week. Stay tuned for Ken. There's Ken more. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, by the time we record again, I will have uh, Grand Cherokee here. So the new one? New one. Sweet. Ooh. Okay. I think it's the l is it the l it must be because they're just doing first drives of the yeah the regular cherokees now yeah they're oh. we didn't get our moab invite stellantis what's up yes okay. seriously yeah especially since multiple waves of people have been out there like come on i know it's, <laughs> it's like all our past guests <laughs> are driving the thing right now <laughs> even some people we haven't had on yet i noticed that so um do you want to talk about what's new to you yet um i guess we could we'll do the 30 second spark notes on it so the jeep left the jeep and left. has been replaced by a fancy land cruiser prado which it's not a Prado. north america they call it the lexus <laughs> gx 460 <laughs> so it's uh yeah it's comfy and cushy and it doesn't have plates yet because the connecticut dmv is slow and uh yeah have uh have a set of tires from Toyo for it that are going to take a little bit of effort to make fit. What color was it? It's black and uh, going to get rid of all the chrome in the spring once I can, you know, paint stuff here without it going to sub freezing overnight. Is it the smaller wheel? It's the 18s that look like the uh, wheels that came on the Sport Edition Fortune Forerunners okay. because they're the same wheels. So <laughs> I got a gray one that's close. It's not okay. That's fine. It's a G- everybody knows what a GX looks like. They have. They've, there's only been two of them. That's exactly what it is. But imagine it's black. So yeah, that, that's uh, Ross bought a Lexus. Bought a Lexus. I'm calling it a Prado. It's, it's so much more fun to say, and I hate saying Lexus. I I know you gave me shit because I, I was like feeling weird about the badge and i just can't get over that dude it's the same parts underneath like it's it's not new enough to be like lexus designed their own crap i think that started in like around 20 i think is when the, <laughs> I, the separation happened like i'm gonna get the license plate prod no <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm writing that down that's good <laughs> sam's gonna hate uh, me but i love that that's a good one, <laughs> Did a you, good one. It, yeah did you get the lumbar support worked out though? Like, is it actually no, comfortable? No, the, I'm taking the seat <laughs> off the thing this weekend. Okay. Well, so, so Ross had switched into a Wrangler 
and it was Ross has back issues, so the Wrangler had to go away because the truck and his back were not friendly. And being as over 40 as I am now, I completely understand if it doesn't <laughs> feel good on your back. Like that's my favorite thing about the suburban is at least my back feels good. <laughs> GM makes good uh, seats. They really do. Especially for things that they know people are gonna spend a long time in going long distance. Seriously. Like my giant ass fuel tank, my seat is comfortable. Let's go. Yep. Like <laughs> yep. my avalanche had a 33 gallon fuel tank and the most comfortable seats that I've ever sat in still to this day. And a so. long wheelbase. And a long wheelbase. Why does nobody tell you what? offer it out? I, I, I'm not a one-upper. Please don't consider me that. <laughs> but I put a Titan, a Titan tank in my Duramax. Okay. That, that's okay. what my dad did too. 67? Yes. Uh, 50. Mine's a short bed, so 50, 52, I believe, or 53. So talk about covering some distance, um, but <laughs> you get you got to take out a loan now every time. It, it's kind of a big process <laughs> to go to the – Go to the bank and then go fill it for fuel. <laughs> you so, get the hundred dollar cut that, off that, and then go back to round. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's the only that's the only downside to it. Uh but of course anytime we're towing, I'm getting like nine or eight. Right. So it still goes by fast, but um because that truck was produced with a 25 gallon tank. So yes. silly. Like what? Oh, so, so silly. silly. I'm now on their website browsing for my make and model. <laughs> yeah, no Titan. Makes... On Titan tank? Yeah. They, they only do diesels. Oh. Now, and there's got to be the liability behind that, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're just, they don't produce <laughs> gas. They don't corrode with biodiesel, though. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't, here's the thing, though. Like, as much as I'm interested in like, yes, a bigger tank, the, the, the kids have to pee too often. Like I, on the highway, I think I've seen it get almost, I think it's been over 600 miles when it's like, all right, you're full up. Like you go 600 miles. Like mm-hmm. that's all amazing. four of them are going to have to pee seven times by the time I get to the end of that tank. Like, <laughs> but you get to pick and choose where you fill up with that's that, true. With that mm-hmm. luxury. Yes. Mm-hmm. It was definitely, I, didn't, I don't have to stop that shady one. It doesn't look like it's had decent fuel in right. forever. Like right. I can keep going. Yeah. There were definitely a few times when my dad had the, t- the small tank and the diesel before he replaced it that like, we definitely showed up at a few stations that didn't have diesel and we we're like, oh shit, this is like cutting it real close. Yeah. Like you carry five in the bed just in case. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so now we carry five of DEF. So oh. Oh, is right. Anyways. Wait yeah. Do you say it D-E-F? You don't say deaf? This is regional colloquialism here. Like uh, out here. It's what like, do you call a sandwich? A sandwich. A sandwich. Not, not a hoagie. Not no. A grinder. That, that, no. That one I know. Sandwich. That's pure okay. East Coast. We, we have sandwich right. shops here. We don't have deaf. What, what's a hoagie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Subway. <laughs> <laughs> So a sandwich. <laughs> exactly. So a sandwich. Exactly. Anyways, moving on. Chris, speaking of. Uh... I'm still excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> Levi, I, I got new wheels for the Suburban. I don't have them on yet, though. Um, I got 18s. <sighs> it's got 22s on it, and they are so bad because it's like oh. this much rubber all the way around. Like, And they're Michelins. Like, they're good tires, but I am so ready to get new rubber. Uh okay. Cyborg. So I want cyborg. <laughs> let's 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 get you some new rubber. I happen to know a really good tire company. Okay. That <laughs> maybe uh, sponsors the side of my race car. <laughs> get him at uh, Yokohama Tire. <laughs> what's um, so just what's the most aggressive tire? <laughs> no, that's what that's he needs. Not, that is not what I want. Ge- actually, the, yeah, the Geolander. We need to go to the Geolander. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, we we can talk after this. We'll we'll yeah. we'll do some real details here in a little bit. <laughs> we won't make this a Yokohama commercial, but oh, if they can one hundred percent sponsor the show if they want to, definitely. <laughs> Always we, game uh, for sponsors. It's it's not uh, it's not inappropriate to say we are for sale. So <laughs> hey, everybody has a price. Exactly. <laughs> Producing a podcast for going on two years without sponsors tends to add up. Uh, Yeah. So anyway, 
Uh, so I'm excited about my 18s just because it means more sidewall. And like the, the Suburban's a premier trim level. And the only reason I haven't really taken it anywhere is I don't want to pop those tiny ass rubber tires, even though I know most Michelin's are good tires, but I've met rocks before and I know rocks don't care. Mm -hmm. Or nails or or really anything for that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They don't care how thick your sidewall is either. (laughs) Sticks, logs. Speaking of names on sides of trucks, let's let's (laughs) talk about yours. I just saw, I saw you, it's, it was closer to me because you were just in Manhattan. Yep. 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 So Loretta, um, yeah, I just picked Loretta up and Manhattan today. I woke up at five and got on the road and was sitting in Manhattan by 845 this morning um, <laughs> to uh, pick up Loretta. Yeah, there she is. If you're watching the video, pulling her out of the powder coat oven. So pretty... So- pretty big process to do this whole yeah. whole thing because that's your that's like the entire tubular frame of your truck is exactly yep completely in this oven <laughs> that's wild. which people people think like tearing down the car is like a oh my gosh it's so much work but it's at this point it's not really at all um at, at all <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so, adult legos like, this at this is, point Exactly. Like, um, this is the fourth time that car has been powder coated. Okay. So yeah, so I, I've, I've got it, I've got it down, but every race, the car gets tore down significantly. Like it, it gets torn down, like transmission goes out, transfer case, you know, drive shafts, mm-hmm. axles, thirds. So the car comes apart every race. You break race, all the boxes but, open after every race. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just, yeah, most of the time I find nothing wrong. So it's a little sad, but <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's what the car looked like prior. Um, oh, shit. the car, the car went into an oven this time and it baked all the powder coat off. Um, mm. then you go, you go by and you sandblast it. But, um, there was a couple months in between this and powder coating it. So it got really rusty, um, just through humidity and traveling on an open trailer and this and that. So, we actually had to go back and re-sandblast it again, which was no big deal. Just get all the surfaces prepped and cleaned. And uh, yeah, got a new new coat of powder coat, fixed a bunch of tubes and fixed a bunch of stuff. And uh, now it's officially ready. The chassis is for uh, 2022 uh, King of the Hammers. That's awesome. Which that's soon, isn't it? Soon. Yeah, you're inside yeah, what, like two months? Can, 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 we, can we not talk about that soon? <laughs> That's like me telling a, a, any aftermarket company, hey, SEMA's next month. That's what I just right, did. Right, right. <laughs> I, it, and it's like every time, like, I know it's the same time every year. I know you've had all year to prepare. But the procrastination, oh. I mean, you, and truth be known, we prepare all year for King of the Hammers in some way, shape, or form. But, um, you know, it's tough. King of the Hammers is tough because our season ends uh, the middle part of October. Right. So, not even really eh, not caught quite 30 days ago yeah it's about a month ago. and uh, yeah about a month ago and uh we're now already 90 days away from our first race and on top of that we have christmas thanksgiving new yeah. year's trying to spend time with family <laughs> it's not fun this time of year is always terrible <laughs> it's slam do you do any like physical training yeah yeah hammers? We, yeah Mm-hmm. yeah um a lot of 12 ounce curls no i'm joking <laughs> yeah, but... um, <laughs> no just be uh, ready yeah. <laughs> no yeah we we do quite a bit um of just training and stuff but it's something that it's very tough so i'm you know being the the crew chief the fabricator the parts guy the truck driver the <laughs> company guy like the team owner having to deal with relations. Um, you know, that term, there's never enough time in the day. It's, yeah, it's yeah. true. Like so much the, the workouts get put on the back burner. So it's, so it's tough, but I've never felt limited at King the hammers due to my physical ability. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try to stay in pretty darn good shape. Um, but, um, it's a long day in the car. You're beat up yeah. at the end of the day. So well, you gotta is, be in really good physical hammers is three laps. Uh, it varies every year. They mainly okay. go on mileage. So let's just say okay. it's 200 miles. 
it's kind of like the average of the years we we figured out so um but every year they make it a little bit tougher <laughs> yeah, exactly it's 200 it's miles from like the most extreme terrain yeah. variation too from slow crawling to wide open lake bed right like yeah, exactly. Like, uh, so, and I might have explained this last time. I, I picture, like, w- when I talk about Ultra Four cars, I, I, I talk about them as kind of Swiss Army knives. So, Ultra Four cars are basically the Swiss Army knife of the off road world. They can literally do everything. They can rock crawl, they can go fast in the desert, they can go fast on dry lake beds. Um, but the downside to all that is um, they're not a rock crawler. They're not a desert racer. They do everything, but they do it at about 75% of the actual purpose built vehicles that actually do it. You know, Jack of all trades, master of none kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. So finish your statement. Um, <laughs> there's rest. There's, wait, we'll talk wait. later. There's more to that saying. I've, <laughs> I've seen it, but I'm not smart enough to tell you. But yeah. But yeah. So. It, it's it's a very cool car to own because you're able to to do a little bit of everything it's wild it's it's such an insane event to watch from afar even um i still love the image it's just i just going through his instagram it's just <laughs> each moment is kind of one of those like holy shit moments that you can find. <laughs> like do you ever get yeah. used to moments like i mean the picture for the listening audience is uh I three can't wheels tell, in the air looks like three wheels are in the air um and kind of like predicament three wheels in the air not not like coming down on one but you ever oh, get we're used settling. to we're settling you, ever, you get used to stuff like that yeah you get used to it and it's all it's all a feel like um it's all about seat time you, you get to you get to kind of used to it to where you get the feel like hey the car's kind of weight transferring over like i've got to catch it right through here um you got to know throttle brake gas reaction time's got to be quick of course um so yes to answer your question you do get used to it i believe it or not um but it's all about seat time you get used to so you know the feeling of oh i just went that little bit too far like i often (laughs) yeah, yeah yeah you know that like it's like simultaneously a rising and sinking feeling in your stomach, like that oh shit feeling. That's a fun one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's definitely it's definitely but but it's so funny. I used to get like so nervous before races that I'd want to go throw up or did throw up and stuff. And after enough time doing it, it's funny. It's just kind of like I, I'm falling asleep in the car before a race and just like, I'm not saying like that as like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to appear as like, you know, but, but you just kind of get used to it. You just get, it's, it kind of becomes second nature, which is great. Um, Cause you don't want to be that nervous guy that's thrown up. Cause that guy makes mistakes. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Right. You used to anything is what they say. It's a perspective <laughs> yeah. shift. Well, I guarantee if you go ask a fighter jet pilot about where he was, to where you know he was five ten years later he, he'd probably feel the same way right believe it believe it so yeah. so i saw on your instagram that you did a whole bunch of recovery training of off-road recovery yeah, yeah. what was so, that like oh it was amazing we went out to to bill burke's place out in grand junction colorado okay um, and took Bill Burke's basically recovery and off-road course. Um, not so much to do with driving, but mainly re- recovering uh, mm-hmm. on what to do. Um, to anybody that doesn't know Bill Burke, I highly suggest you Google that name, Bill Burke. He is amazing. So I don't know. Do you guys remember back in the day seeing those Camel Trophy Land Rovers? Yeah. Like, oh, like yeah. the iconic like, Camel oh, my Cigarette. God, yes. Yes. You know, they're floating them across the rivers. They're having to do stuff. So I, I'm going to get the years wrong. I want to say early 90s. Um, Bill applied to, to go to this Camel Trophy. Um, and they accepted two people from every country. So it was this very sought after um, off-road event. So 
Bill Burke applied um, and went and tried out. And he was like, he got selected, uh, you know, out of like some crazy, like 300,000 applicants or just something oh crazy. Gosh. And then on top of that, you got it. Once you get selected for that, you have to go try out. So he was having to go try out. Um, I want to say right there in Grand Junction and um, get selected. And he was in his late thirties, early forties competing as 20 year old kids, like having to run five miles. It was a very physical deal. Um, so anyway, so he ended up winning that event and then going over and competing for the U S uh, during the camel trophy. And the camel trophy is like the most insane off-road event ever. I mean, like probably more, probably harder than kicking the hammers in a lot of different kind of ways, as far as just like long-term longev- longevity of like endurance. Um, mm-hmm. Just, you got a winch, you got different challenges every day um, and you're with your people a long time. So definitely, uh, definitely a guy that can tell some stories. <laughs> believe that so I, so it's forty one thousand miles is what one of the is years that what was. it was what yeah. oh my god through 26 countries over a year no oh, that's different that's got to be something that's got to be wrong yeah yeah that that's that's that was mm, yeah um it, so it's I, a, I know it only went for 20 years from 1980 to 2000 i know that much <laughs> well and i imagine the whole cigarette company money with doing the camel trophy and you can't have that um bill talked about why it failed and what went on with it all um and and there was politics just like everything else in this life uh, of, of why it ended up stopping but uh it's something i feel like they should bring back and Dude, it was in I, some of the most insane places brazil yeah. sumatra papua new guinea zaire brazil borneo Jeez. australia madagascar i don't even know how to pronounce that one sulawesi <laughs> i don't know brazil siberia try. tanzania i'm sorry tanzania burundi ghana malaysia argentina paraguay chile like <laughs> it's all over the place Fuego well, was 98 we're, I don't know, when we had Jeff on recently and he talked about the Land Rover thing that they, they tried to do, it's kind of like they're dipping their toes back into an event like that, but on like the tip, tip, tip of the iceberg, you know? Well, that was, like, well, yeah. It, and it seemed like back in the day, like, and, and I thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, like, somebody's going to tell me I'm wrong. I'm sure on this deal, but Land Rover didn't, they sponsored the event, but the guy that owned Camel still bought the vehicles. So he no, was they the were, owner of them. They were, they were prepped by Land Rover, but then, yeah, he, he bought oh. them and they fixed them and then they were his like, yeah. Yeah. Because I, like, I was asking Bill, like, where did your Land Rover that you competed in this event, where'd it go? Like, wouldn't you want to have it back? Like when it, mm-hmm. like I would like, yeah, just have that yeah. sitting in your driveway, and he's like, I'm, I, I have no idea. He's like, <laughs> it like, floated around for a little bit and wh- whatever. But he, he, he's a interesting character, great guy. So, but, what was your biggest, best, most helpful takeaway that doesn't <laughs> doesn't give you any tips for other racers that might be listening to get an advantage? <laughs> you, you, you know. Um, So basically I went there, um, representing Ford. I've been getting very involved with, uh, Ford motor company on, um, training their engineers and certifying their engineers. So they're able to go test vehicles, um, on Ford's ground and in Ford's vehicle, you know, it's just the game of kind of the liability side Mm -hmm. of things of they've got to have somebody safely. I, I have to sign off on this person. So, uh, I've been getting more involved with that and, uh, so they wanted to start basically a section of their training of off-road recovery. So they sent me and uh, three other guys out there to uh, get certified basically from Bill um, and approved from Bill. So we can kind of start doing off-road recovery classes at Ford with your engineers. So basically if nice. they're testing a Ford Bronco with a winch on it or something, they've got to know how to properly 
you know, hook up the winch, what to do, the do's, yeah. the don'ts, um, you know, cause that's a huge liability. So yep. time. that's the reason I was out there. Um, so basically I've been winching stuff my entire life, like from my first Toyota to trailers, to pulling, you know, buddies out to <laughs> now to my adult life of actually ultra four racing. And we use winches every once in a while. Um, we're always in the heat of the moment and I did not realize how wrong, how wrong I was doing everything <laughs> just like horrible. And so more from I a learned how to, safety standpoint or speed. Yeah. Standpoint. Sa- okay. Safety standpoint yes. from, from a safety standpoint, because we don't care I mean, in racing, it's just like, throw it on, let's go. Yeah. And with Ford, there was a little bit of, uh, honestly, there was a little bit of, uh, I don't know. They, they, they were, they weren't sure about me because I'm a racer and taking this. Uh, but I, so I kind of had to prove myself like saying, Hey, I'm here to do things right. Um, I am very knowledgeable about winching and what to do. Uh, but just show me kind of the ropes and show me what to do. So there was a lot of cool different techniques that I learned from, uh, you know, how, how to properly teach this stuff. So that was kind of my big takeaway is a how to do it correctly and safely uh so i can basically transfer this over to the uh, ford engineers and teach them how to do this safely and uh yeah that's uh it was it was pretty freaking amazing uh to be able to do that i I had no idea what i was signing up for and that's such a such an interesting topic too because doing and teaching are two totally different things in you know, a lot of people have had seat time riding right, riding right seat on a track or an autocross circuit, and then swapping with the instructor and having the instructor tell them and and seeing and doing and doing and telling or, you know, totally different things and stuff like winching, like, Oh, think about it. You know, you get so used to it and then the time comes to, or, or you watch somebody do something and you realize it's unsafe is when the only time that you know when to step in. Oh, oh, absolutely. And that's where people have no idea um, how, how to work this equipment. They're buying for their Jeeps, their Broncos, their whatever. Um, so there, I, I highly suggest anybody to go take this course because you will learn the right way, the safe way things that you thought you knew and you didn't know. And and more importantly, the numbers behind stuff Um, with, uh, you know, having to calculate weights and snatch blocks and ratios and, oh, I, I, it's a lot. It it, it is a lot, but uh, overall, overall learned, learned a bunch. And I highly encourage, uh, because winches are dangerous, man. Um, I I, I, strap your buddies. Yeah. I don't have one for a reason. I have traction boards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, there are times that winches are are pretty darn neat to have. I, I'm a huge fan of them, but same. Yeah, yeah same. Yeah. Ne- <laughs> next best thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just. I feel, I feel like using a winch is safer than hooking up and doing the old, uh, you know, the old uh, assist. Yes. The, 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 <laughs> that's, that's true. That's what you see. Like, like I did with bumpers my... going through. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I used to do so way back in the day. God, oh, I don't want to admit how many years ago it was. Um, it's like 20 years ago when I had my Wrangler and someone got stuck. We just, it was a toe strap between Jeeps, toe hooks everywhere, just strapped it up. And I got pulled out a couple of situations with some doing exactly what you're talking about, just snatching it back a little at a time. And I flat toed a buddy's Wrangler to the shop. With just a toe strap and him, oh, yeah. ho- him hopefully stopping, but oh my god, it was just the sketchy stuff we did. Not good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I now taking this course and being certified, I uh, now look at all the sketchy stuff I've done and uh, <laughs> how little I really knew about safety. <laughs> exactly. Did, did Ross freeze? I think Ross is frozen. It's the first time that's happened in a while. Well, so it's just you and I. Okay. Yeah. So we can keep talking about Broncos. So I have a, I call it my lukewarm take because, so in a period of a couple of days, I drove a 392 Wrangler 
I drove a, a Bronco with the two seven in the 10 speed and I drove a Bronco with the two three in the seven speed manual. Okay. Just real back to back to back. I was hopping in and out of stuff constantly. Um, the 392 Wrangler was like 80 grand. I think it was 80, 83, five that I drove the two seven Bronco uh, was in like the fifties. And my, my hot take is that like the Bronco was like 80 to 85% of what that 392 Wrangler was, but without spending $84,000, yeah. like, I really, really enjoyed it. And then the one I had the manual, I, I, I used that crawl gear mm-hmm. and I just pointed it uphill and took my pop the clutch and didn't touch the accelerator. Didn't touch anything just went right up yeah just sat back and i just held the phone and we (laughs) took video of it going up the hill what so what was your honest takeaway of the bronco what what after you got to drive stuff i know it was in a hurry but i mean what was your honest your honest takeaway with it so the first thing i kind of paid attention to when i got into it was so the red one i had was a wild track and it had the hard top and how much noise the hardtop was making behind me. Was it a production or was it a pre-pro? It's pre-pro. It, everything was yeah. pre-pro. Um, so then the, and I know that roof is a big sticking, the hardtop's a huge sticking point for the yeah. Bronco right now. Yeah. Like it will eventually be remedied. I know Ford's not going to let them run around making squeaks. That one squeaked. The other thing I noticed on the Bronco, which again was a pre-pro thing, and both trucks were pre-pro and they did the same thing. When you open the driver's door, and it, since it's frameless, the window's got to come yeah. down a little bit, right? Well, it wasn't doing that fast enough. And so, like, as I was doing it, it was still catching a little bit. So when I would open it, the whole <laughs> driver window glass would just be sitting there wiggling back and forth. But again, like, a little bit stronger rubber to help support the window there. Like, just, yeah. again, pre-production truck. Well, out of all the issues that I've kind of had, you know, over, you know, the, this year with the, uh, the Bronco, the the with the pre-production stuff that had been fixed and that that's one thing that is very important to remember because these things have been road hard put away wet these pre-productions exactly um, they're there's they were still working out the bugs with the pre-production um uh, it was in what you just said i never had one <laughs> stick i had one stay open okay um and then obviously some of the top issues yeah um other than that i had I mean, we have beat on these things hard. And, and I know I probably seem like this big Ford fanboy, but I'm a contractor <laughs> and I've just spent a lot of seat time in the Bronco. Yeah. Um, I don't work for it. If Jeep called me tomorrow um, to say, hey, we want you to to uh, do what you're doing for Ford for us, I can say yes. Yeah. Um, so I, 10, I, I'm 10, able 90, to right? form. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm really able to kind of form a, opinions. Yeah. And I am just so floored about that dang Bronco. I mean, it is seriously <laughs> like the a, roof a thing unit. and the door thing bugged me. But as soon as I got in it, like all of the diff locks were push buttons and it was quick. The and hero easy. switches. Yeah. Yep. There, all that, the, the trail turn assist where, where it drags Locks a wheel that basically yep. tight. And then he's like, apply way more accelerator than you think is necessary. Like really? And he's like, do it I'm like, all right i'm gonna do what you said i floored it and that thing just pivoted i loved it like it was great it's amazing yeah, yeah. it's an amazing and feeling so i i liked it a lot i think we we joke all the time that 50 is the new 35 when it comes to new car sales like it's not that big a deal to just drop 50 grand on a bronco like it's yeah which the, the yeah, Tahoe Ross was talking about earlier was 73. Like what? Like, yeah. Uh, what is money right anymore? Now. So what uh, is money? Inflation. Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> just economics, just, pish posh. Just let me yeah. finance it for 20 years. It'll only last seven. It'll be <laughs> fine. It'll be, no, wait, that's I'll not. Finance in some of the 20 years. I, heard <laughs> I mean, my children might be paying for it, but. Exactly. You know, they don't need to know. We took it out of their college <laughs> education. It's fine. Oh, what? 50 grand's not buying much in the college. We're supposed to be saving so. for the, uh, I'm not 50 grand's not doing anything. Like it. No. That's I'm not saying semester. it's gonna pay for it, but that will pay for books at a books. Yeah. Books. <laughs> Dude, I went to K State. I remember paying books. Those things were expensive. <laughs> it's yeah, a my, I'm, I'm, 
I'm a community college guy, so uh, dude, I we didn't have to pay for those. We we've told all of the kids like the trades are real. Like if you want to mm-hmm. go trade route, like <clears throat> we're on board. Like we're not going to force you to go <laughs> spend a bunch of money in college. Like go be an apprentice. Like learn something. Like. <laughs> So far, none of them have looked like they're leaning that way. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. My oldest the other day was like, hey, dad, what's genetic engineering? I was like, holy shit, I'm going to be paying for college for a long time here. <laughs> genetic engineering. <sighs> Just remember, they're going to pick your home. So exactly. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> So just remember that. And, and if they're making a lot of money, then the nicer home you get, Chris. We, 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 uh, we want to preempt that. I've, I've been looking at this trend called barn dominiums. Oh, yeah. What's that? People that take like shop buildings and take a third of it and make it, a, or two thirds of it, make that their family home and then keep the other mm. third shop. So super cheap to put up, and then you just spend a lot of money doing the inside. Shouse. Yep, shop, shop house. house. <laughs> Shouse. <laughs> it's like glamping for house ownership. Yeah. But well, okay, so here's here's my deal with that. I know we're we're probably getting off subject here. <laughs> no, we're good. It's, it's <laughs> that's all we do. <laughs> you get metal siding that's gonna yep. last forever versus exactly. regular siding. Um, you get to have an indoor basketball court. That's cool. Yep, because giant mm-hmm. roof. <laughs> yeah your tax you're paying taxes on one building yep not two. one big building yep. but yeah just the, just in my opinion that the the cost has got to be driven down significantly than the property tax and everything that comes with it so right. and then if i run any type of livestock i pay ag taxes <laughs> yep and yeah. i can and they don't even have to be my livestock i can <laughs> rent the lot the land and and still count as ag just get some sheep to mow the lawn for you and they write it off Oh man, this is Kansas. I gotta get a cows. Yeah, <laughs> you can't yeah, be we... the can't be the one guy with sheep on his land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that 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 must be an East Coast thing. The sheep. I, it I is know. actually. <laughs> is it? I, I I have friends in New Jersey with. Lots oh, of, you told me. Yeah, sheep. <laughs> sheep herd. Uh, anyway, wow, I didn't see that. Anyway, completely right. off topic. This <laughs> is what happens when you drop out and come back in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Actually, yeah, we're, we've kind of talked down through most of this. King of the Hammers is coming up, and then the 2022 season's there for you, right? Yeah, um, it's a big year. Um, you know, one thing that is uh, really, really cool that you'll see dropping hopefully sooner than later, um, but not in time for King of the Hammers, will be a new car. Ooh. Ooh. A new Ultra 4 car. Ooh. So. Fun. What? I can what? send you some pictures on the side, but <laughs> nothing can be released to the public. Okay. Uh, I, I'm so for that. It, it's, it's, it's an all new car, um, all new platform. Um, I really wish that we were able to race King of the Hammers in it, but you don't want to be taking an, all, an untested car into King of the Hammers. Okay. So that goes one of one ways. Does King of the Hammers yeah. count as just like a, because it's still the Ultra 4 series, but does it just stand as its own? And then the rest of the season? Yeah, essentially, yeah. Okay. You don't have to. And there's no rule of King of Hammers that you can't race a different car race to race. Okay. Um, so I, I can switch cars mid-season or whatever. Okay. Um, but, yeah, i disappointed that I won't have the new car. Uh, but it's uh, part of it. I, I want to do things right. Loretta is a great car. She's got me to the finish line every year but once, I want to say, okay. out of. 2014 was the first wow. year so that's an old yeah. race car yeah right it's an old race car it, it's like cat or dog years or whatever exactly you know, it's, like, yeah. it's like times seven it, <laughs> journalist it, it, miles it is. yeah it, 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 <laughs> journalist miles it is, is times 20 times 20 it's times 20. 20 yeah journalists look terrible to cars oh the worst uh, uh, so yeah it's a super old race car uh it has been yeah, it, every year I'm like, come on, please just stay together one more. But I'm so meticulous on my maintenance with it. So it's that has a lot to do with it. I don't feel like there's very, very many guys that I'm racing against that are as thorough as I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just because I've dedicated my life to it. So um, I'm able able to do so. So but, 
do you have another L female name picked out for the next car? Well, we've, we've, uh, gosh dang it. So I've talked about calling it Linda. Okay. Um, which makes me think but, of the tiny kid standing in someone's kitchen going, Linda, this is not your house. That 100%. No, Linda, 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 listen. Listen, Linda, that, listen. So that's when she's acting up. I'm going to have to say, Linda, listen. <laughs> um, or or I might switch it up from this one and, and not stick with the L names. I'm thinking about Vanna, like Ooh. Vanna White off of Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. Just kind of a classy old gal, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Is that the vibe you're going for in this one? That's the that's the that's yeah. the vibe I'm going for. I just don't know that I can actually call it Linda. So I'm I'm, I'm thanking Vanna. That's like okay. I always I always wanted to name a dog Kevin. So like when you're at the dog park, you could just be like Kevin, come <laughs> like just just human names. <laughs> yeah, I love it. What's the dog's name in in um, Smokey and the Bandit? Smokey oh, and the God. Bandit, the dog. Name oh of... man the one in the semi <laughs> is, is that what you're talking it? about yeah <laughs> i was just gonna say fred. snowman but i know that what is it fred, fred. yeah yeah That's i have a good. hank yeah i have a reese there you go like that yeah he's playing he's blurry yeah <laughs> he's blurry. it's because kids walk by naked sometimes so we had to start blurring the background <laughs> it's awkward it does i, I got tired uh, of having to cut does. stuff out <laughs> yeah yeah, we, we had the same issue with Ross too, but he was the <laughs> yep. he, he was the one. I'm like Ross, you gotta yep. keep keep the G, man. You've at least warned your wife that she can be seen when she walks back there. She right? knows. Okay, she's sure. well aware. <laughs> Fair enough. Sweet Levi, do you got anything you want to plug? No, I just I, I really appreciate you guys uh, having me on here. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun 2022 season. Uh, hopefully you guys maybe mid-season we can do a, another little catch-up deal and yeah i can come on for a third time maybe um <laughs> Jack or emmy he's coming for you <laughs> if uh if you ever you know need a fill in let me know i'll yeah. I'll, I'll help host uh but no <laughs> let's do it man uh, I, I i really really uh appreciate you guys have me on yeah. uh but definitely excited for the uh, so, 2022 season ultra four kind of goes around was it most is there's a west side and like an east side yeah so there's there there's actually getting to be even more so there, there's a north there's a west north and east okay and in east isn't as far east as you really think it is it it's is like, like kentucky tennessee yeah, yeah kentucky, okay. something like that um and there's even a race in oklahoma <laughs> so for not the really east? east for the east <laughs> yeah down in davis oklahoma super awesome track but um yeah, so this year I'm I'm not really chasing the points. I'm 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 choosing the the races that I have, have the the most traction, the most visibility, um, okay. and ultimately best for the program. So I'm skipping around. I'll race a uh, West Coast race, North, and probably an East, uh, okay. and then Nationals. So, um, uh, but one one race that I'm really excited about is uh, Pikes Peak this year. So it's kind of hush hush. But okay. not that we're talking about it now, but uh, I just submitted my entry form <laughs> okay. to be oh, racing yeah. uh, Pikes Peak this year. When is That's that? Awesome. When is that supposed to be? Uh, end of June. June yeah, right? it, and they get they've got it back in the summer now, where, mm -hmm. where it belongs. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, be in, awesome. end of June. So yeah, so it's gonna be cool. So I'll be racing the same same track as the Porsches and everything like that, um, and the the ridiculous cars. So. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a new challenge for me. I'm excited. Uh, one thing that is uh, that is going to be just kind of sorry. If You're right. You're my, right. Uh, my phone went to twenty. So <laughs> one thing that is kind of exciting uh, is that uh, we're going to be using the same Yokohama tire through all these different races. And again, so I'll be rolling up Pikes Peak on thirty nine inch Yokohamas. <laughs> Oh, and, that's uh, the best thing ever. But the car will be slammed, and it's it's pretty salty. It's about 850 horsepower. Okay. Um, so I think it's going to move. I think it's going to be okay. You know, all-wheel drive, going to be 39. pretty, Jesus. pretty, pretty quick. <laughs> Man, that's going to hey, steal the show. 
This will be so 39s, great. 39s, 39s are the new 33s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Sure. That's that's solid. That's solid. <laughs> 39s are the new 33s. Well, Sawzall mm-hmm. stock just went up. Anyway. <laughs> What do, they, what do they call those fender rollers? Is that what the? <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> it's not gonna get six more inches of tire under there. Uh, there's a saying that the sawzall solves all. So it does. Yep, it does. It does. I need to anything will fit thirty nine if you try hard enough. That's right. What's well, like the Arctic so trucks that are running forty fours and? Yeah, that's. The, the those are to drive road. across glaciers. Like that's not. <laughs> Anyway, that's not going up Pike's Peak. <laughs> well, sweet. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, you can rate and review the show on iTunes. Please, please do so. It's been a hot minute since somebody has, but I know I can see the n- numbers going up, guys. So somebody do it. If you're new to us recently, that'd be nice. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. You can watch You can watch Ross fall away and come back. And the auto people didn't really know he left, but we talked about it, so they did know. Sorry. Um. You can follow Levi on Instagram. It's at Levi Shirley. Facebook too. Yeah, I think it's uh, Levi.p.shirley on Facebook okay. for whatever reason. Because <laughs> it's because it's the internet and things are weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can we will read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer, everyday driver again. I'm still saying it until Ross actually writes something again for them. I did uh, like two months ago. Okay. Ross is at no, not like the one from Friends, and I'm at Overlanding Dad. And we've done it. I Thank you, it. Levi. Levi. Well, yeah. Thank you guys for having Thank me. Thank you, man. Sweet. Fun as always. And I say always because it's been more than once now. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm glad you're not falling asleep. It is, is it 1038 there, Ross? 1038. Oh, boy. Yeah. Didn't turn yeah. into a pumpkin yet. No. No. <laughs> <laughs>